Last time I talked about two fundamental characteristics uh, which are shared by everything that exists. These were the dual characteristics of masculinity and femininity, or positive and negative, or, and the uh, dual characteristics of internal character and external form. Because uh, they are shared by all existence, uh, the divine principle assumes that there are aspects of the creator who uh, projected them into everything that he created, just like an artist's character is reflected in his art. Now, these two, these uh, dual characteristics, they don't exist in isolation, but there's a relationship between the two, which brings me to the fundamental concept of subject-object relationship. So let's stay with uh, internal-external for the moment. In the human realm, uh, there is a human spirit which controls uh, the human body. Uh, because of that, the controlling part, the spirit, is considered to be the subject in relation to the body who is in the object position. Spirit, subject, body, object. Of course, there is a two-way relationship here. The body also gives feedback messages. Feedback uh, signals, you know, like if I walk to the door, uh, there is an obstacle on the way, I, uh, the spirit has to, has to respond to it. The body also gives unrequested signals, like when I'm hungry, or when I get the, uh, get the flu, I get headache and fever. So and the spirit has to do something about it. So in case of flu, I can throw some antibiotics and feel better instantly, or not. Uh, a more spiritual approach would be to let the body take care of itself. The body actually can do that. There are built-in mechanisms in the body that handle much of the body's functionality with us being completely unaware about it. So there are built-in mechanisms. These built-in mechanisms in turn are in some kind of subject position in relation to the physical matter of the body. But let's not make this too long here. These subject-object interactions, they are also called give and receive interaction or give and receive action, or less accurately, give and take action. Less accurately because it's not a matter, not a matter of giving and then taking, it's always a matter of giving. Uh, that's important, for example, in human relationships. What's supposed to happen here is that the subject gives, then the object gives in response, and the subject receives that response. The subject initiates object response, another way of putting it. Now, all these um, interactions, they don't just happen randomly. They always have a purpose and direction, which brings me to another important concept in divine principle, the four-position foundation. The name implies it. We have two more circles, one on top and one on the bottom. The top circle represents a purpose, the intention of the interaction, and the bottom circle stands for the result, the outcome, the manifested purpose of the, uh, of the interaction. For example, if you want to uh, make a drawing, your idea of that drawing it would be in the top circle, you and your materials, there's a subject and object, and the bottom circle, that's the finished drawing. Of course, both the subject and the object need to understand the purpose of the interaction and agree on it. Otherwise, the interaction will be flawed and so will be the outcome. If, for example, we put the subject purpose up there in the, into the top circle, well, that's a drawing for exploitation of the, of the object. If you put the object's uh, purpose there, well, that never works either. Uh, example, city... Uh, mayor and city employees. Mayor, subject, city, employees, object, no fundamental problem here. But what is in the top circle? The mayor's career, hardly likely to create harmony. The, the employee's paychecks? No, I don't think so. Uh, what, what about the city's interests? Well, well, that could work, right? If, make that a big if. The problem is that human relationships are rarely a source of examples for harmony. Uh, to have examples for harmonious relationships, uh, we better stay with protons and electrons, plants and animals. In human relationships, uh, too many things go wrong all the time. Uh, we talk later about why that is so. 
Um, but let's, let me look uh, once more a little bit closer at this example with the city here. What we have um, here are actually two levels of purposes. One is the level of the people here, the individuals, and one is the city up here. And the divine principle here uses the terms of uh, purpose of the individual and purpose of the whole or intuitively so lower and higher purpose. And these two purposes, the purpose of the individual and the purpose of the whole, again have a relationship with each other and you guessed it. It's a subject-object relationship with the purpose of the whole in the subject position and the purpose of the object of the individual in the object position. And where there is a subject-object relationship, there's a four position foundation. So what goes in the top circle? Well, what comes above the city? Uh, what is more important than the city? Well, maybe the metropolitan area, the province, the state, the nation, the continent, the planet, the galaxy. Mm. So, what we're getting at here is actually that uh, through serving both individual and greater purpose, the purpose of the individual and the purpose of the whole at the same time, all the things in the universe are actually interconnected. And that's why the divine principle calls it an interconnected body with dual purposes. In the four position foundation, if we just focus on the subject object relationship or on the outcome, then we can collapse the entire hierarchy of purposes I just mentioned by writing the ultimate purpose into the top circle. And that's what you often find in divine principle illustrations. The, the top circle very often just says God, the ultimate giver of purpose. That's because uh, ultimately, the purpose of all creation is determined by the Creator. The same when you create, you first determine the purpose and then you create. So, let's take that one step further. Uh, if you remember uh, the movie about the dual characteristics and God's nature, um, all that led back to one basic assumption about God. God is a universally limitless loving being. So. Uh, at the center of all this interconnected body of the universe, which is the universe including us, there is a God, there is a limitless love which flows through the entire body, the universe including us. If you could only feel that, uh, then we would have much less problems in our societies. However, I mentioned the obvious fact that uh, in human relationships harmony is the exception rather than the rule. And that is uh, because we usually uh, get the purpose of the individual and the purpose of the whole messed up. Either the purpose of the whole is pursued at the expense of the individual or the other way around. Uh, however, if you could experience and feel the inherent oneness of everything in the universe, then we would not have that problem. This event of, uh, is actually the event of experience that is actually called transcending duality. It's not a divine principle term, but it's a pretty common, uh, common term. And many people experience that to increasing degrees. And we talk about this next time. Uh, this was a lot, okay, in the end this was a lot of stuff. Uh, and it was a little bit intellectual maybe and uh, very intense, but we went through more than 100 pages of book and uh, one day of lectures in less than 10 minutes. That is pretty cool. So, see you next time.